How's your spelling? Well, pause with me for a minute. And in your mind, spell the word guilt. Use capital letters. Got it? Okay, hold on to it for a while. We'll get back to it in just a minute. Let me tell you about a painting of the Canadian artist Andrew Gable. It's the picture of a young man with the skin of his back wrapped around a pile of dull gray rocks. He can't go forward because the rocks inside the skin of his back are too heavy to move. The skin on his back is stretched away from his body and he can't go any further. His left hand is stretched forward to balance himself as he stoops against the weight of the burden. His right hand reaches back to the pain in his shoulder and his face is grimaced. Behind him, there's a wall of bigger rocks supporting the five-letter word we spelled earlier, G-U-I-L-T. Here's a young man held back by the burden he carries on the inside, and the word guilt explains why. Commenting on this painting, its artist, Mr. Gable, wrote, Stop guilt before guilt stops you. That's an awesome statement. Stop guilt before guilt stops you. But that's not an easy thing to do. Guilt and its twin shame are emotions. Guilt is feeling bad about something in your life. Shame is feeling bad about yourself, well, because of that something in your life. And you just don't set emotions down and walk away. They go with you. They're part of you. You have to learn, well, to live with them. And that's what I want us to do for the next few minutes. I want us to learn how to live with our guilt and shame by looking at two observations. Observation number one, the mistake we make when dealing with our feelings of guilt and shame. Then observation number two, the break we can make from these destructive feelings of guilt and shame. Okay, first observation number one, the mistake we make when it comes to feelings of guilt and shame. Go back to the word we spelled earlier, G-U-I-L-T, guilt. What letter is in the middle of that spelling? G-U-I-L-T. It's the letter I, as in me, myself, and I. That's what guilt and shame are all about, how I feel about something in my life, and thus how I feel about myself. Look at the other letters and connect the dots of thought. G stands for guilty. I feel guilty because of something in my past. U stands for unacceptable. I feel unacceptable to God, myself, and others because of my past. G-U-I-L stands for lost. I feel spiritually lost and on my way to perdition with my past. G-U-I-L-T stands for tormented. I feel tormented and torn to pieces on the inside by my past, guilt. I'm miserable and haunted by questions like, how could I have done something like that? Thinking about the past. How can I live with myself? Thinking about the present. And how's this going to affect my family, my friends? my destiny, thinking about my future. Now, who are we really thinking about? What have I done in the past? What am I experiencing in the present? What I fear for the future? We're thinking about ourselves. It's like we've cast a spell on ourselves. We don't feel forgiven by God because we won't forgive ourselves. And that's the mistake we make with our feelings of guilt and shame. We're thinking too much about ourselves. Thankfully, there's a solution. We can come to grips with a past that has a grip on us 
when we quit thinking so much about ourselves. Jesus said, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, Matthew 16, 24. We have to deny ourselves the need to feel miserable. <laughs> Brother Dan, I have to feel miserable. I've messed up in my past. You may have messed up, but you don't have to feel miserable about it. That's what forgiveness offers. It takes away our past. So if we're going to learn how to live with guilt and shame, we have to quit thinking so much about our feelings and start thinking about someone else's feelings. We need to start seeing ourselves and our past through the eyes of God. And that brings us to observation number two, the break that we can make from feelings of guilt and shame. Let me read to you from one of Jesus' best known stories. It's thought to be the greatest short story of all times. It's actually called the gospel within the gospel because it encourages us to see ourselves through the feelings of God. It's the parable of the prodigal son in Luke 15, verses 11 to 32. A father's younger son demanded and received his inheritance. Then he went away and lost everything he had in reckless, literally unsaved living. Family, money, friends, self-respect, it was all gone. One day, while he was slopping hogs, as we would say, he was just trying to survive and decided to go home with a prepared speech. The prepared speech, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. Now, how did he describe himself? No longer worthy. He said, Daddy, I'm of no value. That's G-U-I-L-T, guilt. Who is he thinking about? Go back and read verses 17 through 19. You'll read the words, my, I, I, my, I, I, me. He was seeing himself through his own eyes and concluded, I'm worthless. We make the same mistake. We see ourselves as failures because we failed. We betrayed our value, so we're of no value. We did what God didn't want us to do, so why would God want anything to do with us? Ah, now we're ready for the rest of Jesus' story. The parable of the prodigal son. It started off with the son viewing himself as worthless. He thought of himself as someone to be treated day by day as nothing more than a hireling, a servant. But instead, his father welcomed him home as a son, treated him like a king. We should stop calling this the parable of the prodigal son and more accurately rename it the parable of a colossal father. That's what it's really all about. The love of a gracious father accepting a guilty son. It's about the love of God embracing us despite the way we feel about ourselves because of our past. That's why forgiveness is so amazing and that brings us to a new memory verse for our next few studies in all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us that's romans 8 verse 37 we're what conquerors victors no we're more than that with god's help We've already conquered, and now we're enjoying the spoil of victory, the peace of living without a past. Let's think about that a little closer with your study leader, and I'll look forward to getting back with you in our next study.